The common factor method for factoring involves taking out the greatest common factor of each of the terms in the expression. Knowing how to find factors and greatest common factors with numbers is one of the building blocks to understanding this. But it does not only involve numbers at this stage. Let's look at this example. I have ax cubed minus bx cubed plus cx cubed minus d squared x to the 6. And I want to take out the greatest common factor of these four terms. The greatest common factor will not include an a, because while the first term has an a, the other three terms don't. It will not include a b, a c, or a d for the same reason. I could only take out an a if all four terms had an a. But all four terms have x's. They have x cubed, x cubed, x cubed, and x to the 6. The trick is, I find the smallest x term from those, which is x cubed, and that will be my greatest common factor. I write x cubed, and then I write a bracket. In the bracket will be the answer to a division, where I divide the original expression by my common factor x cubed. ax cubed divided by x cubed is a. Negative bx cubed divided by x cubed is minus b. cx cubed divided by x cubed is c. And negative d squared x to the 6 divided by x cubed is minus d squared x cubed. I can verify this by multiplying my two factors together and making sure that they give me the original expression. Looking at this example over here, I have ax squared plus a cubed x squared minus ax cubed. This time there will be more than just an x term in the common factor. All three terms have a's and all three terms have x's, so the common factor will have a's and x's. The smallest a of a, a cubed, and a is a, so my greatest common factor is going to include an a. The smallest x term of x squared, x squared, and x cubed is x squared. So my greatest common factor will have x squared in it. When I divide the original expression by ax squared, I get 1 plus a squared minus x. We have to be careful when our greatest common factor is exactly the same as one of the terms in the original expression. It doesn't mean that term goes away. It doesn't give you a zero. ax squared divided by x squared is 1, so 1 has to be showing in your factor. If I multiply these two factors together, I will get my original expression, so it will verify. Here we have xy minus 6x squared y squared plus 9xy cubed minus 12x. We can't factor out a number because the first term doesn't have a numerical coefficient other than 1. All four terms have an x, but not all four terms have a y, so we cannot take out a y either. Our greatest common factor is going to be a term of x. When we look at our x's, we have x, x squared, x, and x. The smallest of those is x, so the greatest common factor will be x. Now, dividing the original expression by x, I get y minus 6xy squared plus 9y cubed minus 12. And if I multiply this factor by the x, I will get my original expression, and it verifies. Finally, we have an expression that does have a number as part of the greatest common factor. 17, minus 34, and minus 51 have a common factor of 17. All three terms have an a, so there will be an a in the common factor as well. We have a a squared and a cubed. The smallest of those is a, so the common factor will have a. And all three terms have an x term as well. x squared, x cubed, and x to the 4. The smallest of these is x squared, so that is part of our common factor. 17ax squared divided by 17ax squared is 1. Negative 34a squared x cubed divided by 17ax squared is equal to negative 2 a x. And negative 51 a cubed x to the 4 
divided by 17 ax squared is equal to negative 3 a squared x squared. If I multiply the two factors together, I will get the original expression so it will verify. This is how we do the common factor method. 